The Glamour of New Orleans by Lafcadio O'Hearn. The season has come at last when strangers may visit us without fear and experience with unalloyed pleasure the first delicious impression of the most beautiful and picturesque old city in North America. For in this season is the glamour of New Orleans strongest upon those whom she attracts to her from less hospitable climates, and fascinates by her nights of magical moonlight and her days of dreamy languors and perfumes. There are few who can visit her for the first time without delight, and few who can ever leave her without regret, and none who can forget her strange charm when they have once felt its influence. To a native of the bleaker northern clime, if he have any poetical sense of the beautiful in nature, any love of bright verdure and luxuriance of landscape, the approach to the city by the river must be in itself something indescribably pleasant. The white steamer gliding through an unfamiliar world of blue and green, blue above and blue below, with a long strip of low green land alone to break the ethereal azure. The waving cane, the evergreen fringe of the groves weird with moss, the tepid breezes and golden sunlight, all deepening in charm as the city is neared, make the voyage seem beautiful as though one were sailing to some far-off, glimmering Eden, into the garden of paradise itself. And then, the first impression of the old Creole city slumbering under the glorious sun, of its quaint houses, its shaded streets, its suggestions of a hundred years ago, its contrast of agreeable color, its streets re-echoing the tongues of other nations, its general look of somnolent contentment, its verdant antiquity, its venerable memorials and monuments, its eccentricities of architecture, its tropical gardens, its picturesque surprises, its warm atmosphere, drowsy perhaps with the perfume of orange flowers, and thrilled with the fantastic music of mockingbirds, cannot ever be wholly forgotten. For a hundred years and more has New Orleans been drawing hither wandering souls from all the ends of the earth. The natives of India and of Japan have walked upon their pavements, Chinese and swarthy natives of Manila, children of the Antilles and of South America, Subjects of the Sultan and sailors of the Ionian Sea have sought homes here. All civilized nations have sent wandering children hither. All cities of the north, east, and west have yielded up some restless souls to this far-off southern city, whose spell is so mystic, so sweet, so universal. And to these wandering and wandering ones, this sleepy, beautiful, quaint old city murmurs, rest with me. I am old, but thou hast never met with a younger more beautiful than I. I dwell in eternal summer. I dream in perennial sunshine. I sleep in magical moonlight. My streets are flecked with strange, sharp shadows, and sometimes also the shadow of death falleth upon them. But if thou wilt not fear, thou art safe. My charms are not the charms of much gold and great riches, but thou mayst feel with me such hope and content as thou hast never felt before. I offer thee eternal summer and a sky divinely blue, sweet breezes and sweet perfumes, bright fruits and flowers fairer than the rainbow. Rest with me, for if thou leavest me, thou must forever remember me with regret. And assuredly, those who wander from her may never cease to behold her in their dreams, quaint, beautiful, and sunny as of old, and to feel at long intervals the return of the first charm, the first delicious fascination of the fairest city of the South. The end.